Hello and welcome to Rules and Rulings, helping you to be judge, jury, but hopefully not executioner of your 5e D&D games. Today we're discussing an element of the game that isn't heavily touched on by the rules, but nonetheless affects it quite dramatically. It's about time. D&D is an epic fantasy RPG which is designed around the idea of an adventuring day, with up to eight hours of travel and a number of different encounters packed into one day with an hour or two of rest in between them. There is very little in the way of guidance given when it comes to time within a D&D game. According to the basic rules, the DM determines how long any particular task should take. Some brief notes are given here with regard to the scale of timekeeping. Dungeon delving takes place in minutes, working your way through cities or wilderness is measured in hours, and travel over great distances is measured in days. The only period of time that is heavily codified is when things break down into combat or similar situations, where initiative is rolled and rounds are measured in six seconds. Tracking time can help increase the verisimilitude of your world. If your party begins adventuring in spring and a few months later they notice the leaves falling from the trees and the days starting to get shorter. Having key dates come and go can also make players feel like they need to pay attention and possibly even take notes about how time works in your world. Time isn't purely a flavour concern either. The vast majority of spells, class features and magic items interact with time by virtue of having durations. The duration of spells and similar effects is the most obvious interaction with time. A spell that lasts any more than one minute can reliably be expected to last the entirety of a combat, and a spell with a duration of ten minutes or one hour could be expected to see you through multiple combat encounters. Anything with a duration of an hour or less will not see you through a short rest, but an eight hour duration can reliably be used for most of the day. How the duration of an effect interacts with the length of rest is also a timekeeping concern, with so-called rest tricking allowing spells to be pushed into the next adventure in day. But that's a subject for a different video. Time also plays a role in when abilities and powers become available. Spell slots return during rests of different lengths, magic items regain charges at dawn, a number of effects in the game also make the target immune to them if they pass a save for a specific period of time. The cast and time of spells is also worth keeping an eye on. Any spell that has a cast and time longer than one action requires concentration while casting, and the use of the caster's action on each turn to continue casting it. Any spell with a cast and time of one minute or more is effectively off limits for combat. Time can be leveraged to keep your players engaged in the game. Time limits and impending deadlines can help keep the party moving when they otherwise might be tempted to more passive approaches. Time is definitely used as a balancing mechanic in D&D, and how you deal with that is up to you to decide. Some of the effects of playing with time are minor, but others can be more severe, and how you deal with that is up to you to decide. In a game with fast-paced plot and tight deadlines, your players won't get to explore downtime activities or see things play out over larger timescales. In a game with a lot of downtime, spells that take a long time to cast become more viable options. In a game with shorter rests, long-lasting spells might get more mileage than in other games. And in a game with longer rests, those same spells might end sooner than they were intended to. So those are a few thoughts surrounding time in Dungeons & Dragons. Not a lot of solid rules to work with, but a lot of systems that are affected by it if you look closely. Something to keep in mind when thinking about tweaks to the way you handle time in your worlds. How do you handle time? Do you adjust spell durations to match your preferred pace? Or do you just let the chips fall where they may? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.